Hello, everybody. It is me, Taylor, from Overture Bucket South. And if you can see me right now, that means you're watching The Real Wind, where I watch a movie and review it and give you my thoughts. I am in no way qualified to be called a movie critic, but I try my best. <laughs> um, so the last video that I did, I believe was on Clean Shaven. If you haven't seen that, um, take a look at our YouTube page and go back and look at it. And at the end of that video, I said that the movie that I'd be reviewing next time would be the last thing he wanted. So that's what I'm doing today. <laughs> so as I said, the name of the movie is The Last Thing He Wanted. It's about two hours long and it's a pretty new release. It did come out in 2020 and um, you can actually find it on Netflix. Again, another Netflix movie, not a Redbox movie, so you don't even have to leave the comfort of your house or your couch. <laughs> so it is a Netflix original and it is a mystery slash drama. Um, it was directed by D. Reese, um, and in case you're wondering why I'm looking down, it's because I have my handy dandy notebook. That way I make sure to give you all the little details of my review and important facts on the movie. So, um, the last thing he wanted is based on the 1996 novel of the same name, um, by Joanne Didion, I believe that's right. <laughs> Um, from a screenplay that was um, written by Reese and Marco Villalobos. I hope I said that right. Somebody out there knows that I did not and they're cringing. <laughs> um, so it's had kind of a presence in out there, I guess, on different platforms, being a novel in a written form and then a screenplay, um, which is a little bit of a closer relation to a script for a movie. So it's seen a few different platforms before Netflix picked it up and turned it into this 2020 movie. Um, its approval rating, um, it had an approval rating of about 5% based on 55 reviews on Rotten Tomatoes um, with a weighted average of about 2.86 out of 10. So that would be like, I guess, almost three stars out of 10. So not too good. It is kind of one of those things if it's not a genre that you care about and honestly, if you're not really into politics um, necessarily, you, pro you might not enjoy this movie very much. Um, the drama or the action can kind of overshadow it, but there were some parts, especially with the whole political um, jargon that was going on. Uh, I don't pretend to know much about politics. I don't pretend to know how to speak about politics. So, for me, it wasn't really my kind of movie, but I am trying to reach out a little bit and pick things that don't automatically grab my attention necessarily. So I thought some of you might enjoy a movie like this instead. Um, so Nick Allen, uh, a critic for RogerEbert.com, called the film incomprehensible to an almost impressive degree. Uh, a true Netflix original film paradox, not even a pause and rewind button at the ready will help it make much sense. Um, ouch. <laughs> I will say again, um, there were lulls due to all the political um, talk going on around the subject and the movie itself um, that I kind of found myself focusing in and out of. It didn't, the film itself didn't really hold or captivate my attention 
to a full capacity. There were moments in it where I did feel like I was very invested in what was going on and actually actively paying attention to the storyline and what was in front of me. And then there were other times where I completely realized that I had totally spaced out and had no idea what was going on. And even upon going back to try to fit in the pieces, I found myself still being slightly confused. Maybe I'm just not, you know, the brightest crayon in the box, but that's just my take on it. Um, the movie itself, it really does sell the emotion. It has a great cast. I personally really enjoyed seeing some familiar faces from other movies that I grew up with, um, seeing the stars of those movies in this type of role that is slightly different from what I remember them see, like seeing them in or seeing them portray a character that's very different from what I remember seeing them portray. Um, their emotions did feel very real, especially when portraying the sense of loss and worry and concern and um, even that longing feeling of compassion that was in the scenes um, or the longing of a once acquired love. Um, you could feel those in some of the scenes and that did really help draw you in to the character and into the scene itself, which is really nice. That's always a really good plus, but as I said, some of the script's writing can be a little off-putting um, and make you kind of space. Um, the filming of the movie itself, the way it was shot, was very well done, I believe, as well. Um, it truly looks and feels as though you've been taken back in time, like you're looking into the past as if you really are having a look into the 1980s, more specifically 1984, which is the time or the year that this story is supposed to be taking place in. Um, so that was really well executed um, with just the visual effect of the way the how do I word this? How do I even describe it? It wasn't just the way the characters were dressed or acted or the little minute background things. Like, obviously, you didn't see a cell phone like, uh, you know, like you were used to seeing or anything of that nature, uh, which also was a very good plus. Sometimes that does accidentally sneak in there. Um, but it was almost, there was like a wash to each scene itself, almost like you were watching a movie that had been filmed in the 80s, but with today's technology and broader expansion on the filming of movies themselves. So it was a very nice little one-two combo, which also helped you feel more connected to the story plot and the storyline and stay kind of in those scenes um, when you felt yourself being drawn into it. Um, the movie has good dialogue overall, but as I said before, there is a lot of political jargon. And so you kind of lose yourself in that unless, like I said, again, you're into you're like really into politics and kind of have a firmer grasp on that compared to me. <laughs> um, you, the overall movie, it, I feel like mystery and drama doesn't really captivate its entirety. You get like, you get a little taste of the political, you get a little taste of the adventure, you get a little taste of real life, like reality. As I said, um, the portrayal of the emotions that we ourselves can really identify with 
like grief and joy and love, those kind of things were portrayed extremely well within their scenes and they felt real. The actors did a very good job of that. Um, so it's kind of, it, it really is like you're looking on a historical event unfolding, but like, it's in, in between this realm of, I can believe that and there's no way. So something between like James Bond and I guess, I don't know, like what's another good movie? Um, I guess like, um, gosh, I can't even think of another good, you know, action drama movie that seems realistic in nature enough to portray true. But basically, if 007's up here, it's probably like right here in the bottom being like kind of a little lower than that. So overall, it's, it is a pretty believable story. Um, and if, I don't know if the entire thing is necessarily wrapped up in a bunch of truth of the matter or not, uh, and if it is, then crazy stuff for sure. <laughs> so um, overall, it was an okay movie. Like I said, it wasn't able to really captivate and hold my attention for the entirety of it. Um, it's not, it wasn't really my cup of tea, but that doesn't make it a bad movie. That just means that it wasn't really for me. Um, personally, I'm on the middle ground about it. Um, if we're going on a scale of about five, like zero to five or even one to five, I would, I would maybe give it like a two and a half or a three. Yeah, probably two and a half, two and a half or three. Um, I was just kind of eh about it, but um, that's just my opinion. <laughs> so that's all I really have for the review of The Last Thing He Wanted, which again, you can find on Netflix um, if you have a Netflix account. And if you don't, you can always sign up for a free trial of it just to even see the movie or ask a friend if you can borrow their Netflix account for a little bit. Um, so yeah, that was my review of that movie. <laughs> uh, you can go and watch the movie and then come back to this video and leave me a comment below and let me know what you guys think of it. Um, if you've seen the movie, you go ahead and leave your comments below as well. I would love to hear what you guys think about the movie. Maybe you feel the same, maybe you feel different. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> we can all come here and just kind of talk movies together. And, you know, that's something that I personally really enjoy. And I would enjoy having conversations with you guys about. Um, if you have any movies that you would like for me to watch and review, you can also leave those in the comments below. Uh, we do come back and we do check them. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and you can see more content like this by doing so. Uh, if you like this video, and want to see more content like this as well, make sure that you go to our YouTube page and be sure that you are subscribed. You can do that below by hit, hitting the little subscribe button. And if you wanna be notified every time we upload new videos, you can also hit that little bell next to the subscribe button to get notifications when we upload. <laughs> um, you should definitely go and check out the other really cool and awesome videos that we have here on our on our channel. Um, we have a wide range of things, not just, you know, movie reviews, but also things like crafts and cooking and different things like that, like trivia and music. So go and explore and have fun with it. And be sure to give us a like on those videos that you're enjoying so we can create more content that you guys enjoy. Because after all, we are doing this for you guys. Um, I think the next movie I'm going to review, I'm looking at my list right here, uh, is Train to Busan, which I have actually seen already, but I loved it a lot, and I would really like to share my thoughts on it with you guys. Um, just as a heads up, 
that movie is a foreign film. It is in Korean, but you can have it either uh, with the English translations. And I think that there's also an option now where you can have it dubbed, I guess, in English, but the mouth won't really match up with the words you're hearing. Either way, it is a really good movie, and I cannot wait to do that review for you guys. So again, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time on The Real Wind. Bye!